In this video, I'll give you an overview of Databricks Notebooks. Notebooks provide a fully integrated, interactive environment where users can write and execute code, visualize results, and collaborate with others, making them essential for tasks like data exploration, ETL development, and machine learning workflows. You can create a notebook anywhere in your workspace. Just select your directory. So I will select my user directory here and I will click on this drop down for create and create notebook. You can give your notebook a meaningful name by clicking here and then renaming it. I'll just call it introduction to Databricks notebooks and press enter. You can also download a notebook or folder to your local computer. To do that, navigate to your workspace, locate the notebook, click on the three dots here, download as, and then you can specify the format to download it in. It can be a DBC format, source file, HTML, or IPython notebook. If you organize multiple notebooks into a specific directory, such as this directory here, you can also download the directory, which contains all of the notebooks. You can also import a folder or individual notebooks by again selecting your target directory, clicking on the three dots, and then specifying import. So you can drag a folder or a file, or specify a URL to the place where the assets are stored. This can, for example, be a link to a GitHub repository. Okay, so let's head back over to the notebook. The notebook needs to be attached to a cluster. So if you click on connect, you can see all of your available clusters here. So if you go to more, you can attach it to an existing compute resource. So the cluster is what provides the computing power. So let's attach this one. So as you can see, it's attached. If you click on the dropdown, you can then detach the cluster detach and reattach it, you can restart it, and you can terminate it. Okay, so the notebook interface revolves around cells. So this is a cell. Cells can be executed independently or in sequence. So you can add multiple cells, and then you can add code in each of these cells. So let me add code in this cell, and I will just type print hello. So this is some simple Python code. To run this cell, you can press this play icon. and that prints the results here. Now let me add a cell above this by clicking here and code, as you can see. You can also add a new cell by clicking on edit and insert cell above, like so. So let me create a variable called text and that text will contain a string which says, please print this text. And then this print statement will print the results of this variable. So I can run these cells individually or in sequence. If I click on this cell to run it right now, it will throw an error because I've not run the preceding cell, which stores this string into this variable. So when this variable is called, it's not defined yet, hence the error. But if I run it in sequence, it should be okay. So if I run this cell and this cell, it works fine. So the order that you execute your cells is important. When you run your notebook as part of a task or a workflow, then the cells will execute that way. So they'll execute from the top to the bottom. The default language for this notebook is Python, as you can see here from this dropdown. We can select other programming languages such as SQL, Scala, and R. So let me change this notebook to now have SQL as the default language. Notice we get this percentage Python on top of these two cells. That is because this was previously Python code. So this percentage Python is a command that goes in the top line of the cell. This is known as a magic command. It tells Spark that although the notebook's default language is now SQL, this block of code should be interpreted as Python. So if I run this, it should work fine. But if I remove this magic command, then I'll get an error because this is not SQL code. But if I do write some SQL code, so let me just write some code in this cell here, select hello, then this should run fine because this is valid SQL. 
and indeed it does. So let me change the default language back to Python. So notice we get this percentage SQL magic command because we've changed from SQL to Python and this was not defined as Python using the magic command because I removed it. So let me just get rid of that line and get rid of this one. So notice we now have this percentage SQL magic command here. So this will be interpreted as SQL. So if I want SQL code in a Python notebook, I would just use this magic command like so. If I wanted Scala code, I would just do percentage Scala. If I wanted R, I would just do percentage R. Great. To delete a cell, you can click on this trash icon here. So let me delete this cell and this cell. Cells can contain either code or markdown. Markdown lets you add formatted text for documentation or for comments. So if I click down here, notice I can do plus code or plus text. So let me do plus text. So notice it has a magic command, percentage MD. So if I do a code cell and I do percentage MD, that becomes markdown as well. As you can see, that's changed to markdown. So let me delete this and edit this one. So to get out of a cell and into a cell, you can double click like so. So this is markdown. So let me just write, this is a header line. So I can highlight this and then turn that into a header. Notice how it generates a hash. So a single hash is header level one, a, sing a double hash is header level two and so on. So this is a header level two, this is a header level one. Three hashes would be a header level three. Now let me write a regular line. This is a regular line. And now let's run this cell. So to generate the markdown, you can just press shift and enter like so. So this is markdown text. You can also add comments to your code cells. You just type a hash in your code cell like so, and then you just type the comment on that same line. So this is a simple print statement. So this does not get executed as code, but it's useful for documenting your code and adding any information that would help people understand the syntax. When you add headers to your markdown cells like the one I've added here, it should be visible in the table of contents and it can be used for quick navigation. So if I open this side panel here, notice we have a table of contents and the header has been added here. This is a header line. If I actually navigate somewhere else, then I can click here to be taken to that header line. So that is a good way to organize the code in your notebook. So if you have long notebooks with lots of code, you can add headers for quick navigation. I've already mentioned deleting a cell just requires you to select the cell and then click on this trash icon. Or you can click on the three dots and then delete cell, like so. You can also move the cells around. So for example, if you select this, click on the three dots, you can move the cell up, you can move the cell down, and so on. So this should all be super intuitive. So back in the side panel here, below the table of contents, we have the workspace directory. So this is a way to navigate your workspace without actually having to exit the notebook. Below that, you have the catalog. So this is a shortcut to the catalog, again, without having to navigate outside of the notebook. And then you have this assistant button, but this is not accessible in the Databricks Community Cloud Edition. Along the top, you have the file menu. This lets you create new notebooks, import, clone, rename, export, move, and delete the notebook, as well as create a table and upload data to DBFS. The edit menu lets you manage notebook cells by cutting, copying, pasting, deleting, inserting, or moving them. And it also offers formatting, parameter addition, and find and replace functionality. The view menu allows you to customize the notebook's appearance and the run menu allows you to run and debug cells, clear the output, go to the last run cell, detach from the compute resource, restart the compute resource and so on. Now, if you go to clear, you may notice clear state. If you clear the state, it clears the notebook state including functions, variable definitions, data, and imported libraries. 
And as I've mentioned, here you can attach a cluster to the notebook. You can only attach one cluster at a time, and only the clusters that you have the relevant permissions to access. Publishing a notebook will create a shareable, read-only URL that allows others to view the notebook's contents. I should also mention that along this sidebar here, you have version history. Now, the notebooks get automatically saved as you write code. So notice this last edit was three minutes ago. So this is auto-saved. If I exit the notebook and I enter this notebook again, the changes are here. But you can also manually save your changes by clicking Save Now. And then you can add a description. So I will just say, added some cells. And now that is saved here. Here's the description. So as I continue to make more changes and save it, it will be added to the version history. So you can access the version history and access a previous version of the notebook. Great. So that's it. We've covered the essentials of Databricks notebooks.